company that you thought you were going to go in and you were making money. This was your livelihood, right? This is how you live. This is how you provided for yourself and for them to treat you this way. It is very overwhelming. I mean, I personally wasn't in your experience, but after you and I had sat down and talked, that 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 is enough for somebody to be in your shoes and to have the, you know, the PTSD and have the anxiety about it. I mean, being mistreated in any capacity, whether it's a relationship, a, a parental relationship or friendship, or even, you know, in the workplace can be very detrimental to someone's mental health. They had told me that I had exhausted all of my FMLA privileges, which I had because I was scared to be in the workplace. So when I went back and I realized, oh, crap, I'm still working next to these people. There is only so much medication you can take to mask what's really going on. Right. And when you have ADHD, it's also hard to articulate how you're feeling mentally. So it just comes out as just a bunch of mumble jumble or you just can't talk at all, which is where I get when I get into an emotional state. Right now, I'm just I'm not emotional. I'm just spitting facts. Like This is just what happened. But if I were to start crying. I wouldn't be able to converse. So trying to like rethink about what's happened, it also causes like short-term memory loss. I'll get brain fog like crazy. I'll get fatigue like crazy because right. my body is stuck in a constant fight or flight. When I was told I had exhausted all my FMLA, they said, well, now you need to get an ADA accommodation. Okay, cool. Keep in mind, I looked like crap again. I kept getting asked if I was okay because I did not quote unquote look okay. All my coworkers cared about was if I was there, they complained so much that Katie is never there. Why the hell would I want to show up when you talk down to me, when you treat me like that? And it's never been put to a stop, right? But it's, she's never here. Get rid of her. If they don't get rid of her, I'm going to show this, this, and this. How about you reach out to me and say, hey, what can we do for you? What do you need from us? Right. So they did. They said, here's an ADA. I had a list of things that they could have done, which the employer, you know, they get to choose as long as it doesn't cause undue hardship to the company. But when there's actually like a list of things, they can't just zone in on one item and then say, oh, we can't accommodate you. Bye. But that's what they did. So I guess it just seemed like they were trying so hard to get rid of me mm -hmm. because I was struggling so bad with being able to just show up when I told them, if you could just like put me in an open position, which is an accommodation, and it would have been the training coordinator, which I've already been offered by corporate and already developed two training programs. There was no reason why I couldn't have that job. They could have they could have done that for me and saved me. And then instead of that, it was just, well, we can't accommodate you because you're asking for a quiet place to work. I didn't ask for that. It's on the list of things. But if you can't do that, you just cross that out. But there are other things up there that we could have done for me. But instead, it was you're going to be terminated on the fifth and then your health insurance is going to be gone. I hadn't even been given an opportunity to go to therapy yet. Mm -hmm. So now I don't even have health insurance to go to an actual psychiatrist, not a counselor, a psychiatrist, because you have to do certain things with complex PTSD. Mm -hmm. So now I've just bought a ton of books because once again, I have to self-medicate. So you're, I mean, so it sounds like after this situation, you've turned to self-care. I, I have see no that, other option. I see that you're also going to the gym, which is releases endorphins, which gets those happy, you know, happy juices going. And, it, and it's unfortunate. Um, that you're unable to seek therapy and, un and unpack your baggage, right? <laughs> unpack the baggage that we're unpacking today. And, and look, guys, I'm by far, I am not a therapist. I am not a psychologist or a, psych uh, a psychiatrist. I just have a degree in psychology and I'm really interested in this, but I'm also really interested in helping people. Um, and, you know, that's why I started this podcast because unpacking baggage and talking about shit that's uncomfortable and talking about your emotions and getting it off your chest and just talking about just to someone that's not going to judge you is a relief 
it is a release of, I don't even know how to explain it. And if you've never talked to a therapist or just talked to someone and gotten some things off of your chest, go talk to a brick wall, go talk to your dog, go, go running and just, and just get it out. But if you don't get it out, it starts eating at you. And like you had said, the, the emotions and the anxiety that you had created inflammation in your body and the body does keep the score. There's a book about that. Um, and, and the more jabs that you continue to take, the body just gets worn down. The mind gets worn down. And once your body and mind start shutting down, you start having those moments of brain fog. You have those moments of delirium. Like you're just kind of like, I don't know where I'm at, what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to refine yourself. And it sounds like you've gone through this negative experience and you're still kind of going through it and you're trying to pull yourself out, but you have moments that you're flashing back. Yeah, pretty much. And it just, I still have trouble sleeping. I've gotten to the point where I'm taking four Benadryl and a melatonin still can't sleep. I cannot sleep to save my life. And if I do get sleep, it's maybe just a couple of hours, but I have nightmares and I wake up in cold sweat because it's just, I, it's hard for me to sit here and think, how can somebody do this to somebody? Right. I get HR isn't your friend, but there, there's so much favoritism. Every time I made a complaint about what was happening, they terminated the old HR manager for reasons they can't disclose and then hired somebody else. But his way of thinking was he has to take into consideration, you know, was someone provoked when this happened? Does this person have a family to take care of? Does this person have kids? Excuse me? You're telling me that you're basing whether you think it's a good idea to let someone go because they have children. I don't have kids. I'm not married. I have a dog. So I guess it was just easier to let me go instead of let the person that has been doing this to me who has kids reap what he sowed, basically. He has not been held accountable at all. It's like I told corporate, he's just been given a slap on the hand. He missed work for a heart attack. Got paid. I missed work for COVID. Had all my had all of my vacation time taken to pay for it. And I'm salary exempt too. Mm. I kept asking, what exactly is the actual bona fide plan? Not just what they're feeling in the moment. Yeah. What's the bona fide plan? I feel I like there was a lot of COVID plans that popped up with a lot of corporate businesses <laughs> that really had, it was just so, so much gray area. No, this was recently. And they could play with it. This was recent. This was a recent thing? Yeah, this was back in July of this past year. So it was, it was one of those things where it's like, if he missed work, it was whatever you need, we'll pay you, whatever you need. I started missing work. We're taking your vacation time. We're taking your PTO, but I'm already working 60 hours a week, even with missing a day. So it just, they based it off of, does this person have kids? And then he wanted me to stop talking about it because he has kids to take care of. Well, you should have thought about that before you went this far. Because right. now this is going to affect me for the rest of my life. Yeah. And you're, you still have a job. Yeah. Wow. So your story is one, it's very powerful because you go from having so much light in your eyes and being extremely motivated and, and, and wanting to make a change somewhere. And you saw the future to be able to make the change to, while you were there, they decided to just cut you at your knees and they just decided to, like you, like we said, degrade and belittle and, and honestly use derogatory terms towards you. Um, you know, at one point, I think you said they called you a crazy fucking bitch and that, <laughs> yeah. is, that is not okay in that any kind of thing. workplace. Um, but for you to come out and give your experience and share your story. I mean, that takes a lot of courage. And even with you battling, you know, your complex PTSD and battling the anxiety and, and wanting to come on a platform such as this podcast and just say, Hey, look, I went through this terrible shit 
and I'm still kind of going through it, but my story can help other people. My story can get out there. My story can impact other people to get some help. So, you know, you're also taking self-care and, and I love that for you. And please let me know if you need anything or want to get out there and do something because girl, we can go hang out. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, if you're listening, thank you so much for listening. To, um, and thank you again to our anonymous guest. If you find yourself in any situation, whether that be a relationship, friendship, parental relationship, a workplace relationship or workplace bullying situation where you feel that there's no way for you to turn. There are options. There are family therapists around. There are therapists and psychiatrists that help. And there are people that actually specialize in corporate workplace bullying. So please, please don't feel like your back is against the wall and you can't do anything about it. Find those options. There's even some ads that run here on this podcast where if you don't even feel like getting outside of your house, you can see a therapist in your home via virtual, whether that's Zoom or whatever platform that they're using to just get it out and the release. So anonymous guest. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> Thank you for your story. It was very impactful. And I'm hoping that it's going to help someone um, that is listening. And thank you for tuning into The Baggage Claim.